Good morning, Calvary, and happy Monday. It's Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Hey, if you're a follower of Jesus, uh, you believe Jesus is the one and only Son of God, Savior of the world, you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you've made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then um, I'm assuming you want to honor Jesus and avoid evil. Okay, that just goes with it. So hopefully you're nodding right now going, yeah, I want to honor Jesus and avoid evil. So given that as the case, you would not then want to give the devil an opportunity in your life or to give Satan a foothold in your life. Uh, and yet the Apostle Paul warns us about doing that in Ephesians chapter 4. He says in verse 26, be angry and do not sin. So it's okay to be angry, just don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Uh, I grew up, learned that one in do not give the devil a foothold in your life. So, uh, look, there are certain things we can do that uh, will give Satan a foothold in your life. In other words, you're opening up your life as an opportunity for Satan to harm you. And, and I just want you to think about some of those because one of them, the Apostle Paul mentions directly when he says, be angry and yet do not sin. So unresolved anger, bitterness, gives Satan a foothold in your life, gives him an opportunity to sabotage you, which is why for our benefit, Jesus tells us to forgive. Uh, forgive our enemies, forgive the people who wrong us, forgive the people who hurt us, forgive the people who persecute us. He just wants us to forgive. Uh, that's why he modeled forgiveness the way that he did, and that's why he tells us to forgive, because if we hold on to that unforgiveness, I love how he puts it. If you let the sun go down on your wrath, then you're giving Satan a foothold in your life. So uh, forgive. And if there's somebody right now that you need to forgive, find them and, and go say, I'm sorry. Uh, it's healing. God shows up when we want to reconcile. Uh, he is the author of reconciliation. But unresolved anger is one of those ways to give uh, Satan an opportunity. So is um, misusing any substance. So drinking to excess. And I know there's a lot of people who, you know, I grew up Baptist. We're not supposed to drink at all, according to uh, Baptist theology. Look, that's not what the Bible teaches. Uh, the Bible teaches uh, moderation. But can I just say that if you have an issue, you know, drinking to excess or, you know, using illicit drugs or even prescription drugs wrong, then you're giving Satan an opportunity in your life. Financial obsession gives Satan an opportunity in your life. Look, uh, financial prudence is good, working hard, making a good living. That is biblically admonished. But at the same time, if you're greedy and you just want more and more and more to get stuff and more stuff and more stuff, that's giving Satan a foothold in your life. And of course, you're giving Satan an opportunity in your life if you're engaged in pornography or you're listening to gossip or even if you're surrounding yourself with people who don't share biblical values. You know, the writer of Proverbs says, the one who walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. And there's a lot of us that are giving Satan an opportunity because we want to hang out with people who are committed to being ungodly. Uh, and yes, we want to minister to them. We want to invite them to experience a life-changing relationship with Jesus, but we do not want to let them be that opportunity that Satan uses to sabotage our life. So pay attention, eliminate your danger zone, whatever that is, and then you'll be protecting your spiritual health and really your spiritual island uh, and not giving Satan an opportunity to sabotage you. I hope that helps and God bless.